a bit quiet, thanks folks, just so everybody down the back can hear us please, if you don't mind. I think, um, first of all, welcome to both of you. Thanks for taking your time out for Mike, I know you've been on for a few minutes today. Uh, it was tough work out there, how was it? Yeah, no, it was, uh, it was very tough. We knew it was going to be tough, uh, pretty tenacious and physical. Obviously, I've played there a few years, and you know, we, we, knew, we, knew, we knew it was going to be, and our preparation during the week was, was, we was on for that, unfortunately. You know, we got off to a bit of a, a slow start, and the longer they're in the game, they seem to get more energy. So, uh, but, uh, you know, we got the win in the end, but uh, that seems to work well. Yeah, I think we've become uh, we've become good for grinding out a few wins. It's uh, not something less of supporters are used to, but uh, I think we'll take the points whichever way they come. Um, you came to Leinster in a roundabout way. Uh, you started off in the UK in Wasps, uh, Connacht, Newcastle. Um, you actually got capped for the English under 21s, I believe. That's right, yeah. And then after, uh, after not getting in the team, yeah. Ireland 21s. Right. Okay. And then. <laughs> You came home eventually, but um, after declaring for England, it was it difficult to make a decision to say, look, you know, I really want to be an Irish player? Uh, not at all, you know, my uh, grandparents are Irish from Belmont and Mayo, so, you know, I'm oh, sorry, you're to very proud, so, uh, yeah, that was, it was an easy decision for us. Good, excellent. Um, Lorte, it is Lorte, isn't it? Not Lorte. Um, Lorte, first of all, how's your injury? It's getting better. I, um, it's been a bit disappointing, but be able to play here um, for the most part, but um, I'm back next week. I could have played this week, but I think I had to uh, um, you know, play a lot of the boys who are probably going to go away to camp this next week with the Irish team leading once in that in the squad. Um, so yeah, I'll be back next week, um, and hopefully uh, all games after that, so it's coming along pretty well. And you came in. You're here on a, uh, a short-term contract, for want of a better phrase, up until December, I think it is. Um, what do you think you can bring to Leinster, to the squad, uh, to the whole setup? Is, is it a case of you're just here to play, or can people learn off you, or how does it work? Yeah, I, I just like to sort of do my thing. I, if my players want to sort of follow, I'll just say do that. But I, I think that brought me into, you know, a bit of experience. Um, I think we've got a young school squad and a young sort of younger back line who, uh, who probably need a bit of guidance at times. Um, and I think um, you know the experience that I've had, I think um, I'm going to be able to help out. I think um, if it was like um, trip going in the in basket and the like going off to, to camp, I think um, it's time for those off to sort of step up over the next uh, next few weeks. So like you you think the Yep. You played Union, yep. you were a cap for Australia, first cap against Ireland. I did, yep. Woo! <laughs> 67 caps, I think, 30 tries. There's a bit of experience there, but uh, when you came and you, you came up to the Northern Hemisphere, you did a stint over Leicester, and that's obviously where you first came across Matt O'Connor. Yeah, that was where I first came across Matt. Well, I obviously knew him uh, being from Australia, and I knew of him, and he, he obviously played um, like a test match for Australia. So. Um, yeah, I've been very lucky in my career to play a lot of, a lot of rugby, a lot of test match uh, rugby as well. But um, yeah, I had a great time at, at Leicester Tigers, and um, I think Matt, Matt's probably good over there. From over there, it's probably a bit of uh, uh, They work very hard. They work very hard at training. I think he's trying to instill that here. Not to say that you know, the boys didn't work as hard um, here already. You know? And it was an easy thing to sort of come here as well because I knew there was a great squad. And, um, there's a lot of history in, in the place and they've won a lot of um, titles, so it was an easy sort of tick in the box for me. I know you've, uh, you've done a little bit of uh, wandering around Dublin, so you managed to get a ticket to the All Ireland final, oh, which yes. is, most of the people here probably didn't manage to do. <laughs> yeah, I was very lucky, I didn't realise how lucky I was until I sort of got there and everyone was. Even the boys were asking my head to get the ticket. And I, uh, How did you get the ticket? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, I don't think anybody's going to argue with you if you ask them for a ticket, anyways. So. Um, but, like, Mike, to get back to this evening, you know, 120 odd caps, 128 caps for Connacht, is it difficult to pull on your boots against a team that you just so recently left and 
How do you change the mindset to, to go from a green jersey to a blue jersey this evening? Um, yeah, I was obviously aware playing my own club, but um, I left Connacht before and played at Newcastle. And my first game for Newcastle was actually a pre-season game at sports ground against Connacht. So, uh, yeah, so I've done it before, and um, you yeah, know, I just I kind of knew the boys were going to try and wind me up a bit, and you know, you expect that, and you just try to keep you cool. And um, but yeah, no, it was, it's done it before, as I said, so it wasn't too, okay. it wasn't too difficult. And you know, you're going to switch on to another green jersey for the Ireland squad over the next couple of weeks, the Autumn Internationals. I think there's a huge amount of hope in the room, uh, primarily because, you know, we've had experience with Joe Schmidt, we've seen success, uh, we've won trophies with him, and there's a lot of anticipation for what's going to happen, and is he going to transfer that over onto an Irish team, and you know, how do you think the difference is, is going to happen? You know, are we going to see an Irish team that played like Leicester? Are we going to see an Irish team that played the way Joe Schmidt? Or is he just going to build on what's happened there before? Um, I think from a player's point of view, obviously we had a mini camp a couple of, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that was just for two days and, you know, it's very intense and, um, you know, Joe's pretty meticulous for attention to detail and kind of all the lines you're running and doing the right thing. And, um, so you know, I think all the players are just very excited and um, you know, it's a real positive coming in and hopefully you're going to see that over the uh, three games, obviously with a tough start against Samoa. Yeah, and do you think um, Samoa, Australia, New Zealand, do you think it will be three wins at home? Yeah. <laughs> I'd say that's, that's the aim for sure, yeah. Okay, um, uh, Lorte, uh, I think you know, you're probably uh, most qualified here to speak about the Australian game. Um, are we going to win? And we is in Ireland? Um, well, I think uh, Australia are rebuilding at the moment, so you're probably getting, getting them at a um, pretty good time. And you've had uh, a lot of luck and success over the last two sort of, sort of years, I guess, with, with, with the with World Beast 30 so long. Um, I think you're probably going to game the favourites actually. I think that what they've done well with obviously Josh Smith is, a, is a, a new coach, but I think they've got good coaches in behind there that have got pub tree as well. I think he'll bring a bit of experience and I think what you'll see with um, the, the Irish forwards, I think they'll probably use a bit more skill. Not to say that they haven't in the past, but I think um, pub tree wants to sort of wants the boys to play with the ball in hand, so I think it'll be an attractive sort of style. Okay, and then, you know, moving from your direct experience with Australia, you, you know, you played the old blacks a lot of times. Yeah. How do we beat them? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think a lot of teams go into playing against the old blacks, probably, probably a bit scared of, you know, they have an aura about them. I think a lot of things have been, I don't know, you just got to, you know, take your head on. Um, and not looking to play in the jersey or what it's about, I think you're just going to play the jersey and you're just going to... Do we, do, we, sorry, do we play different types of rugby? You know, is there a Northern Hemisphere style and a Southern Hemisphere style? Yeah, well, yeah you do. I, and I think um, the grounds are a lot drier now. I mean, you just pass the ball um, a lot more and you sort of want to play a bit more. But I think, well, certainly as an Australian player, when we did come up, we found a very frustrating um, play um, lots of while and all the Northern Hemisphere teams because the score just played, kept the ball in in the rock and we didn't really have a chance to play I think um, they've still got to keep it that style and I think you can frustrate a lot of the teams. Great, and you know, the one thing that a lot of people are getting used to nowadays is um, uh, some new IRB trial laws and scrum laws and bits and pieces. Uh, Mike, how, how are the new scrum laws affecting you as a player? And do you think Lenser are adapting to them very well? Do you think that we're a good team to work with us? Um, I think uh, we were probably struggling a small bit at the start of the season and the scrum was, was kind of a bit of a lottery. It just seemed kind of the ref was guessing the decision, but um, I think as time's gone on, I think all the teams are getting used to it and you know, slowly it's, it's showing improvements. But um, I know for the players, I suppose it just means the balls in the scrum are you know, a hell of a lot longer, so uh, the ball kind of used to be in and out, and it's, you know, now he's scrumging for a lot longer. So. Especially for the front five, you know, once you come up from the scrum, your legs certainly feel a bit, a bit heavier. So, uh, yeah, I'd just say the ball's in the scrum a lot longer. It was, uh, it was nice to see this evening, I think everybody here would uh, back me up on this, but uh, our scrum was going forward at a rate of knots. 
a lot tonight. And, um, you know, we were winning penalties that maybe in the past we wouldn't have won. Um, people were playing tight and uh, do you think that, you know, we can keep this going? Is this just, you know, is, is, is what happened this evening something that you're working hard on? Um, well, to be honest, the, the lads were, you know, were pretty disappointed in the changing room after. We know it was a pretty poor performance, but then on the other hand, you know, you have to take the win and we show good spirit to come back from, you know, losing the training for the whole game, really. So, you know, you have to take the positives and uh, understand there's plenty of stuff to work on. Um, but you'd rather that than be winning, I suppose. Absolutely. And um, I suppose to, to close up the evening, Lord uh, you've had um, you've had a run in the centre. Yeah. Uh, you've had a bit of time on the wing. Yeah. Um, there's a, a favourite player here who plays in the centre. So <laughs> how does uh, how does wing sound for the rest of the season? Are you happy to keep going? I'm happy to play with him. Matt wants to play me, and you know, I'm confident. Really enjoy myself here. Really enjoy doing it as a as a city's roster. Have a great time. Well, that's brilliant. Halloween this evening. Uh, we do always give our, uh, our visiting players uh, a bit of a treat when they come. Uh, as usual, all the merchandise here is on sale in the corner shop. So, you know, these guys have paid their dues this evening, so you will bring home a special OLC book. We've done a little bit of trick or treating for you. Um, I think. Uh, Jimmy Gopper got this delivered to the change room and it never actually made it to him. Everybody managed to uh, take it off and so bring those home, share them out and enjoy yourselves. Pardon? Oh, Marty Moore. Well, Marty Moore is deserving of every chocolate he can win. Make it easy, though, is. Now, we put a little bit of housekeeping. Um, just a uh, final point, the OLSC is uh, staffed and run by volunteers. Everything that happens up here on the pitch is all done by people who give up their time so all of us can have a good time at the match. Um, it's a tradition that lets us rugby thank all of the presidents for the time they put in. Last year's president, Ashley O'Connor, uh, retired this year. She, um, she put in a huge amount of time and effort uh, she was a key person in promoting the question and answer sessions that we do every evening and uh, we try and make sure that everybody has a good time. So let's rugby we have uh, kindly given Ashlyn a signed jersey and I'd like the guys to present it to her. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, one last time, Lord Jane Mike McCarthy.